Woo! How's it go? Whoa, shit. Did I hit the end stream button? Nope. I thought... I, I went to grab my mouse and I thought I hit end stream. And I was like, no! Wrong button! Uh, what's going on, everybody? Some of you guys noticed in here I was talking to myself. Uh, you probably see that in the uh, chat right there. I was just uh, trying to reset the chat up. And I got to, like, you know, chitty chat to myself for a little bit there. Well, uh, you know... Hopefully everybody's well this uh, Thursday evening. Uh, if you're in the chat, let me know where you're at. Give me uh, give me a shout out to your location. W chat, Austin, how are you? Mister White, good evening. Damn, a Thursday I'm off work and time for a live stream. Let's go. You know I've been trying to think of another word. You know everyone's always like you know when they get excited, everyone's always yelling "Let's go." You know like "Let's go." What could you yell? What could we yell that does not let's go? That could like take place of let's go. You know, I find myself saying that sometimes and I'm like, I don't really like the way that sounds. Everybody says let's go. I mean, come on. We got a Colorado, Texas, Iowa. Man, Iowa. Huh. Cool. Uh, dark place in the UK. Yeah, it's 86 degrees outside here today. It is hot as shit. Uh, Michigan, Arkansas, two Arkansas. Lynn Johnson, that's a good name. I'm Brad Johnson. Fallbrook, yeah, yeah, San Diego. San Diego. What are we going to talk about today? We don't, uh, oh my god, let me, my notes are not open. Uh, there they are. Let's switch to dark mode so I can actually see this a little bit easier with all this light on. Shh, dark mode. Dark mode. Colorado, let's see, where's everyone at? Arizona, Guadalajara, is there a GDL? That's, is that GDL, Guadalajara? Mexico, the UK. We already, we already talked about you, Mr. White. Did we? No, we didn't. You're a Nebraskan. Miami, Colorado, Oregon. <clears throat> uh, or Oregon, I guess it depends on uh, your preference. So what are we going to talk about? We got HK tanks. I got a 77 and a 68 in the Alpha. We're going to kind of like put those on a gun and, I don't know, just kind of see what they uh, what they feel like. Uh, we're going to talk about YouTube memberships because I'm shutting down Patreon. Uh, Caffeine TV. Uh, there's a Lux Idol going on, raffle going on right now. We're going to touch on that. The WCPPL live stream. Uh, and then I'm going to talk about the NXL exhibition uh, that may be coming up here in Texas, whenever the hell Texas is, in like a month or something like that. Uh, you should say, let's go get this show on the road. No, that's kind of lame. Because you can't really, let's go get this show on the road. <laughs> What's the, like, let's get this road on the show? I say that sometimes. Who's that fat guy in your YouTube photo? That's me. That was me six years ago. I've lost 240 pounds. Oh, my God. YouTube is not receiving enough data for smooth transmission. Let me know if something gets crazy here. I'll send it. The send it would be okay. That's, it's it's kind of hard to yell, though. What's cool about Let's Go is it's so easy to yell. Send it! <laughs> kind of hard to yell. Uh, let's go... Tater chip. I thought that said tartar chip. And I was like, tartars? Like, like tards? And I was like, tartar? Like tartar sauce? Tater, what about tater salads? Now on Otter. I don't know. All right. What the hell are we going to talk about? Uh, do let me know. Let me know in the chat if it starts to get a little weird. Uh, YouTube's telling me that uh, we're having data problems. I don't know. Okay. Let's, uh, I don't know. Let's just talk about HK tanks. Uh, but first, we always got to shout out BFP gear. Nope, and I'm on, like, you know, kind of backwards. BFP gear right there in that bottom corner. The sponsor of these live streams uh, and a lot of stuff. If you ever want to buy anything that's ever in any of these videos, uh, definitely use the links in the description. 
uh, as they, you know, I get a little kickback from that. It helps them know that uh, I'm actually sending people over there. Uh, like these HK tanks we're going to talk about in a little bit here. There's a link in the description uh, that goes right over to BFP gear. So you can look at like, you know, different colors and whatever. Uh, buy yourself a cool new cheap, not cheap. I was going to say a cool new light tank. Uh, they're about the same price though. They're not like too expensive, but we might as well actually do this. So what's kind of weird about this is, you know, I thought that this was uh, on the actual box to the tank. This actually said it was a pro reg uh, and it didn't look inside there to see if it was a pro reg or not. It's just their uh, whatever standard they're calling their what the heck do they call that now? The HP eight, uh, just their standard reg. And, you know, it's kind of crazy, right? That looks like a 68. Uh, but it obviously, like, like it says right there, is a 77. Uh, so the whole point, oh, there's actually a weight on the bottle, which is interesting. I never noticed that. That's cool. There's the 68. And just look at how small it is. It's certainly uh, just a little bit fatter. Uh, and we also have talked about uh, previously when we they first like kind of launched these things. You can see the back end, right? Uh, how this is a little bit more rounded. Uh, then the 68, you can't really tell in this, but it's definitely not uh, as round as like a traditional, you know, like a Ninja bottle or uh, even the previous HK tanks. You can probably see it maybe a little better uh, on the 68, how it's kind of like flattish at the top. But we're kind of going to do two things. I just want to like uh, compare some stuff. We got a scale. We're going to switch our camera and actually move few things around here we're gonna move that we're gonna get rid of the mousy and uh, do that so it's just a little bit easier to see uh, so the 77 <clears throat> and the 68 uh, and I have a couple of things here so we have that's the 77 uh, from ninja their SL2 like they're you know best most current high-end tank or whatever and if we just put them side by side, I mean, it's dramatic how much smaller they are. Uh, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's a little bit weird and hard to see because this lens is actually a little distorty. But if we put them that way, it might be a little easier to tell. Now the camera's moving all over, so it'll stop. But just look at how much, like, you know, it's considerably shorter. I mean, it's like a good inch about shorter. Uh, so it's kind of crazy just how much shorter they are, uh, but a little bit fatter. It's, I mean, obviously it's very hard to tell right there, but uh, it's slightly bigger around. You can kind of feel it when you're holding it, uh, but obviously right away, the biggest thing we're going to notice is uh, just how much this thing weighs. Uh, and this scale is accurate as well. I, this is the scale that I weigh everything on. So let's just put it on there. It says that it weighs one pound. 12 ounces right there on the side, but uh, I don't know if that's with the regulator. I'm hitting the wrong freaking button. Wait, there we go. One pound, 15.8 ounces uh, with that standard regulator on there. And, you know, I'm assuming that, you know, that weight on the side of the bottle, that one pound 12 ouncer uh, is without the regulator, which makes sense because nin or HK are also offering their AeroLite 2 Pro Regulator uh, on all of their bottles. So their 68s, uh, this 77, and then the 48 that just came out. And with these standard regulators, <clears throat> they are 215. And with their Pro Regulator, or I should say the 77, I'm sorry, is 225. And with the Pro Regulator, it's 300. That 68 right there is 215. And then with the Pro Reg, they are 290. And I don't know, they also have the 48. I'm mean, gonna I guess the 48's like two, 205 and 280 or something like that. Uh, so what do we get? We got one pound, oh, God, oh my God. We got one pound, 5.8 ounces again. And uh, I uh, accidentally opened up some music when that fell on my keyboard. 77 SL2 
is two pounds, five ounces. So 5.4 ounces. Uh, so we could say six ounces. I mean, six ounces is really kind of considerable. You think that um, it doesn't sound like all that much, but what's that's probably like, you know, I don't know, 18, 20 ish percent lighter or something like that. Uh, and it's considerably smaller. So I know a lot of people, uh, maybe you prefer that 68 tank size. Uh, and then going with one of these 66 it's or 77s, the new Alpha, it's not going to feel any much different uh, than uh, using just a normal 68. And this is kind of what I wanted to see too. So this is my, uh, this is the tank that I use all the time. Uh, the Ninja or the, gosh damn. The HK Army Aero Light 2, and then that is their Pro Regulator. So I do have uh, the Pro Reg on there a little bit, completely empty. And yeah, I mean, almost seven ounces different there again. Uh, but this is a little bigger. Technically, uh, it's an 80, so it's a little bit larger uh, than the Alpha bottles. Uh, I also want to try. We're going to uh, go back here. And the last time I showed this gun on the channel, uh, they kicked me off a live stream. But we're going to try it again and see what happens either way. <laughs> they might get rid of us. Uh, maybe if I put like a tank on first, so it's like obviously a paintball gun. Uh, let's uh, turn the air off. Just in case. I don't really know why. I, like, don't want to put it on screen. <laughs> Kinda. Okay, so... You know, I'm obviously used to that. I'm used to that, like, uh, 80 tank. We're going to put uh, the 77 on. And I want to just feel how much different uh, it pop... Jesus, dude. That's crazy. I mean, it's certainly different. When you put it on a gun, I mean, it's way more noticeable how much lighter it actually is. But that for sure is too short for me. You know, I couldn't just use a 77 like that. Uh, I would probably uh, plop on a tank extender. Just like that. To make this bad boy just a little bit longer. I mean, yeah, the length is really good. I That length's pretty much the exact same. It's actually a little longer, which I probably like a little bit more. Uh, but I really, the back, you know, it's so much, we just talked about all that, but you can see it right there. It just is like shaped quite a bit differently. I want to get out of the way and it'll actually focus. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of tell that that this, you know, <clears throat> That white tank is way, like, more rounder, so... It just feels weird on my shoulder. It just feels, feels so flat. Huh. I don't know, I really like these. They're, uh, you know, it's not often that we're seeing a difference in tanks. I think that the last, probably, big tank thing we saw was when Ninja released their SL tanks. Now I'm not going to be able to get that off of there. Oh well. Uh, when Ninja released their SL tanks, those super light tanks, that was probably the, f I don't know, the last time, the last time we saw any, like, type of change, uh, from tanks. So it was just kind of cool to see something actually lighter, uh, and something we actually notice a difference in, you know? Most of all this tank stuff, it's kind of like, I don't know, people are releasing, like, new regulators that are better and all this stuff, but, uh, it's kind of hard to tell the difference in these things, so it's cool to see that... Uh, or feel an actual difference uh, in these lighter weight tanks. And they're just about the exact same price as all the other stuff, you know. The Ninja stuff, the Ninja Pro Reg tanks, the SL2s like that one down there, uh, are 165 Yeah, 165 So it's like, I don't know, 30 bucks more. It's not that big a difference. The Alpha tanks. I'm going to put this back. What are you guys talking about? Oh gosh, what's happening? Why is it Aaron? It's hard. It's hard. It's hiding Aaron's comment that says no one likes flat butt. 
Uh, yep, Alpha Tanks. I think the butt end of the tank is where they reduced material. Yeah, maybe. I mean, a little bit. I mean, I would, I'm, I'm assuming that it's just smaller everywhere, just that the tanks are, the walls are thinner everywhere. And uh, one thing we were kind of curious about, because I think that, like, this is the same uh, manufacturer that makes the first strike tanks. Uh, and those first strike tanks have that certification that they last 47 years. So they have a 47 year lifespan. Uh, and these do not. These only have a 15 year lifespan as well. So uh, even though they're made by uh, the same manufacturer in Korea, I believe. I don't even think it's going to say in here. Uh, maybe it's in China. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but even though they're the same company actually making the bottles, they do only have that uh, 15 year lifespan. It's better to have it and not need it rather than need it and not have it. <laughs> yep. Yep, that's true. I don't know what you guys are talking about, but that's definitely better than, uh, you know, something. What is happening? Mark's crying, laughing at something. Hey, Brad, what field do you recommend around Sacramento for mechanical ball? Uh, you know, I think that probably all of them. I mean, I think at this point that the mechanical stuff has gotten so popular that... Uh, really, I think no matter where you go, you're going to find people playing mechanical. Uh, but in reality, you know, I haven't been anywhere other than Capital Edge. Here in Sacramento, I haven't been anywhere else in probably like five years or something like that. So uh, I honestly really couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, but I think probably anywhere. I mean, I think your biggest problem is going to be that uh, some of these paintball fields get... A ton, like a ton of people in a good turnout every single weekend. Uh, and then some just don't. You know, some places will have a handful of people and there could be 200 over at the other field. So, Nick Sloviak is here. Oh, look at my armpits. Wait, Steen. <laughs> Told you it was hot. The air conditioner's been on for like the last 20 minutes. Thinking of getting a KP3 with a CP regulator to replace a stock one. Thoughts? Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I like the KP3s. Unfortunately, there's not like, um, there's not too many options for pump guns though, right? I mean, if you want an inexpensive, decent pump gun, uh, KP3s are really like the only kind of option out there still, uh, if you can find one. I mean, Zoden's not making anything anymore, but, uh, they're still out there somewhere. Uh, and their regulators, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's hard to say just go buy a, you know, $100 reg or, you know, $85 or whatever they are now. Um, yeah, I lost my train of thought. Uh, it's kind of hard to say go buy, you know, a regulator that's, you know, a third of the price, a quarter of the price of the gun. Um, I would personally probably try to use it first and just see what happens. And, and then maybe... Uh, if that regulator is kind of shitty, I would uh, look into buying one. Yep. Man, my... my... Oh, Flemmy. Bloop, bloop. Uh, so one thing we're certainly going to do here on this YouTube channel uh, is open this memberships up. Uh, so if anybody uh, is familiar uh, with YouTube memberships, if we, let's just do this. I'll actually just kind of, we'll just walk through it together. Uh, okay. So for not a long time, oh, I forgot I, uh, I forgot to open the browser. Hold on. Uh, yeah, for not, not too long, but for a handful of months there, I had a Patreon running. Um, and Patreon uh, wanted to... Hey, look at that! Nick Sloviak's the very first member to join here. We're going to walk through that. We're going to show everybody how Nick just did that. If, if Safari is going to open. Oh, there we go. 
Whoop, 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 whoop. Nope. Oh, I should have done, I should have set it as my default browser because we're going to open that up later. Hold on. Okay, we're getting there. What is happening? I'm like opening the dictionary up and shit. Default web browser. We're just trying to change the default web browser. So if I click on links later, it'll actually open in the correct spot. Okay, finally. I don't know what that is. Uh, so if we go over to the Paintball Ruined My Life YouTube channel, if we type Paintball Ruined My Life, it's close to the, the like Pro Bull Riding Association. So there's, there's definitely that. Um, uh, you can see earlier I was watching uh, this guy. What is happening? I can't, I'm like, I'm all over the place today. You know, I got up at 4 a.m., so I've been up for 12 hours. I'm a little bit, uh, we're getting there. Damn, I like, can't see this because it's all covered up. I want to close that video. There we go. Uh, okay. For the love of God, we're get, we're doing this. Uh, so, uh, YouTube memberships. If people aren't familiar uh, with YouTube memberships, uh, what they are is there's, uh, yeah, yeah. You click this button. Uh, it's a way to kind of like support the channel. Uh, and then hopefully you guys can get a little bit of like extra perks or something like that as well. So, uh, on Patreon, we're doing this as well. I'll kind of like discuss the differences with, uh, differences maybe with Patreon as well. Uh, Patreon also had this very first tier, uh, this two ninety nine tier, uh, and you're just kind of a supporter role, right? You're just kind of seeing here's two ninety nine. Uh, you're going to get some stuff for that though. So any of you guys in this live stream right now, uh, your name obviously turns green. So you can kind of see in the chat, there's Sloviex right there chatting away. Uh, you can see his name's green. Uh, so it'll show you're uh, a member in the chat. Uh, it also gives me like notifications when those people leave comments somewhere. So it's way easier for me to like uh, reply to comments right there. Uh, you'll also get access to the members only chat room. So the private discord members only. Kind of like members only jackets from back in the day. Uh, and then in the advanced category, or the advanced level, you're going to get all that same stuff. So you can still use, uh, like, the emojis in the chat. You're going to get those cool little, like, how long you've been a member and priority reply, members-only chat. Uh, but also early access to new videos. Uh, so typically what I'll probably end up doing uh, is new videos that come out. So say, like, yesterday uh, when the Lux Idol review came out, uh, that video was really done about a week ago. Uh, so for anybody who would be in this advanced category or this advanced level uh, or that pro level would get access to that video, you know, about a week ago. Uh, so you're going to get early access to videos and then also exclusive member only videos. So like um, I made the Shocker Era test and shooting video. That's actually up there right now. So any of the advanced or pro uh, people can go watch that like exclusive for them only uh, Shocker Bolt test kind of shooting video and then also went out and played uh paintball last weekend and we just kind of did drills and i wore the camera the whole time and kind of just put a bunch of footage up there that video is like 17 minutes long that's of us doing one-on-ones and uh really just kind of hanging out and talking uh so that one you're going to get all those previous things and early access and then exclusive video stuff uh this one's just for whoever feels like giving me 25 bucks uh to help support this thing uh, it's a little bit higher tier. Some people have wanted to pay higher, so now you can. Uh, and it's the exact same thing. I'm just going to try to, uh, in videos uh, and in live streams, give those like pro people uh, shout outs or, you know, make it known uh, that they're supporting and thank them in live streams. And really, it's kind of complicated on how to do this, right? One of the problems with, with you know, Apple is that they take 30%. Uh, of any money, any anywhere, if you're using an iPhone and you're inside an app and you uh, buy anything in an app, you're literally just giving 30% to Apple. Uh, so you, YouTube's kind of weird about this. On some iPhones and some iPads, uh, you can actually see a join button. But if you're actually in the official YouTube app, they're going to charge more. Uh, and I have, I have really no control over that because it's just how they're 
trying to recoup some of those costs from Apple. Uh, so it's going to be like three, four ninety nine for this lower tier if you sign up for an iPhone. Uh, this one's probably fifteen dollars, and this one might be thirty dollars. Uh, so they're certainly charging more. So if you, you know, if you want to sign up, uh, if you want to become a member, uh, it's probably easier from the browser, uh, or is or uh, you can also. I kind of put this little weird thing together. If you're actually watching uh, a video, you could actually just click that share button right there in the app, click that copy link button, and you'll have that copied. You can go over to the browser. This is insane. I'm telling you to do this. Paste it. <laughs> I, was just, I was like, this is crazy steps. Click that A button, and then you can act for a desktop version. And then it'll actually allow you to see that join button right there. Uh, so you can still do it from mobile and get it a little cheaper. It's just a little bit weird. Uh, yeah. So if anybody wants to, you know, I, I very much appreciate it. Uh, it helps support this channel. And hopefully uh, you guys get a little bit back uh, for helping support this thing. Uh, and if anybody was members on Patreon or is uh, a Patreon member, uh, I've actually paused payments on Patreon. Uh, so no one's going to get charged ever again on Patreon. Uh, and one of the things we were doing on Patreon uh, was a monthly giveaway. That giveaway was the third Thursday of every month. And uh, I'm still going to do a giveaway next weekend, or next live stream, for those Patreon people. Uh, but I'm not going to do giveaways anymore. I just can't, like, realistically do it. And I don't want to give away crappy stuff, you know? I don't want to give away, like, oh, you know, here's a tank cover and, you know, a, like a two pods and a barrel cover. You know, I don't, I don't want to give away that stuff. Uh, I'd like to give away, you know, expensive things, uh, like barrel, full barrel kits. We gave away, I gave away a full barrel kit, uh, given away. Uh, I still owe Matt because they don't have any, uh, a black spire five, uh, and YouTube just doesn't allow giveaways and it's a pain in the ass on YouTube. Uh, that's also another reason uh, I'm kind of paranoid about getting kicked off YouTube now. Uh, Please join, at least check it out. Uh, I would very much appreciate anybody who wants to go sign up uh, and be a member on said YouTube channel. Shorts, with a $4.99, I also think I saw you sign up already. You did. I'll have to sign up for membership on my laptop. Can't use the browser on my phone. Sorry. Yeah, it's stupid. I don't. I'm, I'm totally with you, dude. I think it's crazy. And then, like, some some channels actually have, like, uh, join logos. Like, it's crazy. Like, if we go on my phone. We're going to, like, crazy watch ourselves. Yeah, some channels, even on the app, you know, will have, uh, I don't know, I can't, obviously, it's way too freaking bright. What if we do that? Oh, it's not going to work. I don't know. Some channels actually have, like, a, a join button on there. I don't know. Please think about memberships. I am so freaking hot. Oh, you see me sweating. Okay. Eric, do a wheel of members like Spick and Span for giveaways. You know what I want to know? How do they contact people? But I also, like I said, I don't I also don't want to give away like wacky things. I don't want to just give away barrel covers and crappy things. I want to give away like high-end products and uh, I can't afford to buy them all the time. So it's like, God, I can't spend like $300 a month and make like $100. I don't even make $100. I can't lose $100. I mean to say email, but how do you email them? Riddle me that. Cause I'm like 99.99% .99 sure that uh, there's unfortunately no way to contact people uh, through YouTube, you know, like you can't like click their profile and send them a message or uh, do any of that stuff. Unfortunately, some people are some of the channels are like, oh, take a screenshot. They're like, take a screenshot of your message 
or your receipt and then like i'm like this is crazy uh i think the easiest way to do it uh, is make a community post and then ask every single person for their email addresses uh, so that if I did do a raffle, it would just be like uh, people's email addresses. Short Spick and Span keep a list and they don't have your email. They just raffle it off again. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was like, I was saying the community post because you can do a community post right here. Uh, I don't like Instagram though, because how the Instagram accounts aren't synced up with YouTube and then you get all kinds of weirdness. I'm just afraid of idiots trying to steal stuff and trying to like scam people and stuff. So, uh, can you see who is a member outside of the live stream? Yes. I mean, there's certainly a way you can see a list of people, but there's no way to like, you know, actually contact those people, unfortunately. Some brain says this is basic web development. You can accomplish this cheap like me personally or YouTube could. I mean, I could I could make a form on the website, and, but then it's hard to verify <laughs> who they actually are. Uh, YouTube's not doing it because they don't want uh, they just don't want messaging on the platform, which I totally understand. So uh, yeah. OK, what else can we talk about? Uh, we have memberships. So, uh, you know, think about, you know, joining memberships. You can go watch uh, some cool videos over there. Uh, uh, yeah. Trust me, I would like to do giveaways. But again, I just... We'll get there. We'll get there. Tyler, there we go. Are you still going to do a giveaway for Patreons for this month? Yes. I don't know what it is yet, though. I'll have it figured out. Yes. Yeah, and then I'll I'll figure out Patreon. I'll post something over on Patreon and let people know kind of what's happening and what's going on. Uh, but like I said, no one should get charged anymore, at least. So, uh, yeah. I picked up a seed kit for my rotor. It makes it 110% better. It's had some of those random companies are gone. I don't even remember what the seed kit did. I, I vaguely remember. Did it have a board in it or something? Was it like an aftermarket electronics too? Yep, Mark is still around. I don't know how, don't ask me how to pronounce his name, but he's still around. <laughs> I think you're watching it from a treadmill. You just hit four miles. We'll keep going. We got about uh, an hour and a half left. So you could do another, like, you know, three miles, four miles. <laughs> How's it turn out in Fairfield usually? Uh, pretty good. I think Fairfield's certainly one of the more busy fields. Uh, I'm not 100% what they're like for rec stuff, though. I know they have a lot of tournament players uh, that are always going out there. So, Eric. They are making a new triad? I don't think they're, they're... I don't know. I'm unaware of a new version. They still have to come out with the... It's just triad. <laughs> like the first one. Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, they thought, they said that they were going to uh, uh, have those out by March. It's like three separate marches, they've said that, and it's not happened yet, so... Oh. This, woo, man, my voice cracked. Let's. Chris Williams with that forty nine ninety nine, sir. Thank you so much. Super chat's freaking awesome. Uh, Chris, you're the type of guy who'd probably uh, enjoy becoming a member here on the Paintball Ruined My Life channel. Thank you, sir. My little light didn't go off because I didn't set it up. Because I forgot. Uh, yep, this is what I was talking about. Why won't, like, Lumia's stream open? All kinds of like computer problems today. Uh, 
Uh oh, guys. I don't know. We're just gonna hope this works. Uh, yeah, yeah. The other day on the uh, Play the Game podcast with uh, Marcelo Margot and Tyler Harmond, uh, they had on Tom Cole, the uh, president of the National X Ball League, and I guess I should stay. I should say uh, video shopping. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. Probably okay right now. All kinds of problems. Anyway, we'll just we're just going for it. Uh, the other day on the uh, Play the Game podcast, uh, like I said, with Marcelo Margot and Tyler Harmond, uh, Tom Cole was on uh, and talking about kind of a new deal that they have with Caffeine TV. This is the very first time I've ever even heard of Caffeine TV. Uh, I didn't know they were anything until. Uh, I have a feeling we're all choppy and crazy and there's something loading right now. I'm going to let this load up and then I don't know. There we go. Okay. Okay. We're getting there. It's like 45 things I got to get ready for these live streams and I always forget like one or two. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Yes, uh, the Major League Paintball, Major League Paintball kind of struck up a new deal with Caffeine TV, and I'm not 100% even sure what Caffeine TV is. Uh, if we go over to it, they've got just a bunch of kind of random content that's at least exclusive, uh, at least exclusive to uh, caffeine TV, not exclusive. I should say they kind of have like maybe partnerships. Ooh, someone super chatted. Oh, there's two of you. Ben, Ben and Mark. Hold, I'll get to you. I promise. Let me finish this deal. Uh, caffeine TV. So it's not like necessarily exclusive videos. Uh, it's maybe stuff that, uh, you can only, I don't, I don't, I don't know. It's kind of like YouTube, but, uh, they, limit the people that can put them on there so it's not exclusive stuff it's just like curated we'll say or something like that uh so there's going to be a lot of just kind of random stuff they just struck up a deal with live golf which is kind of cool i know that everybody hates live golf though so there's also that uh there's a bunch of like you know channels on here there's formula drift which is a big thing i don't know see i don't know what a, most of this stuff is uh but uh, Major League Paintball has a bunch of stuff on there now. I don't know what this is going to be in the future. Uh, I know that Tom Cole said that they had a lot of a, a lot and a lot of views uh, on some of their videos. Uh, but I'm extremely skeptical. I mean, if we look at like this is uh, three days and four thousand views, you know, fine. I don't know. Who knows what views are like on caffeine? Uh, but if we scroll down here, like. There's some of these videos have so many views. It's just not realistic. Like, look, this has 66,000 views. Like, who the hell is watching the layout pre-show from Vegas? 66,000 views? There's no way. Like, there's just no way. And some of these have, like, hundreds of thousands. The coaches show, 108,000? I mean, that's just nonsense. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, this is just a new place for them to have stuff. Uh, they did talk about, Tom Cole did talk about, uh, they're very interested. So apparently, uh, this is owned by 20th century, 20th century Fox, 21st century Fox. I don't know. Fox Viacom or whatever. Uh, so they have money. Uh, and Tom was saying that they want to try to do like a one-off kind of event, uh, possibly and have it only be broadcasted on caffeine or something like that. So it could be cool. I mean, you know, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I just thought it was kind of interesting, although I don't have any idea what, uh, what's really happening with it. Well, uh, we'll see. <laughs> ben Lawton, fuck, Mary kill Bob Long. Okay. The company Bob Long. I was like, damn, I gotta, I gotta, uh, Bob Long. I was like, I can't fuck Bob Long. Okay, Bob Long, Angel WGP, 
golly, you put a lot of them in here. Okay, Bob Long, Angel, and WGP, or Planet Eclipse Die, do like you prefer. <laughs> let's just go, let's leave them as you, you wrote them. Bob Long, so... Sheepers. Okay, that's an easy one. I'm going to kill WD WGP War Game Products, of course. I mean, I don't want a goddamn autococker. I mean, Jesus Christ. I'm going to marry... Shit. And then this comes down to Bob Long and Angel. Can I just, like, fuck Angel and marry Angel? <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're killing Bob Long, we're killing WGP, and we're marrying and fucking Angel. There we go. Mark with a super chat. That's all I have in my Cash App account. Yeah, what's with that, Mark? Cash App? Can you pay Cash App like this? Well, either way, I appreciate it, dude. Of course I do. Did you watch WCPPL? Yeah, someone wrote a comment and I totally... God, Mark and Eric are going off. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> Dana, good spot, good place for an all-star match to be broadcasted, for sure. Yeah, I was thinking, like, I like the one-off random tournaments, you know? And it kind of made me... Uh, also, you know, it just reminded me that uh, Tom was also saying that they're going to hopefully uh, try to do an expo exposition, not an exposition, an expo an exposition, no, an exhibition. They're going to do another exhibition. They're going to do an exhibition match uh, again at World Cup. And uh, you know what I'd really like to see? I mean, we've talked about this all the time on here. And for the last, like, a uh, couple weeks, we were like... Uh, talking about, I don't know, different formats. We've been watching a bunch of old videos. And you know what I would really like to see is just them try to, like, open the field up more. I think rather than trying to do, like, uh, any type of, you know, crazy new format. You know, adding multiple buzzers or uh, having different scoring and stuff like that. I think that, you know... Open the field up a bunch, you know, make it like 2004 again. Let's get rid of all the huge ass bunkers and then make the pro guys play on like half the amount of bunkers. Because I'm curious, curious about that. I think that right now, the way we have the layouts, you know, we're not really forcing people to run around. And back in the day, you'd have to run way out to the corner because it was the only spot to go. You know, there weren't all these little bunkers right out of the back center you could just go to really quickly. So I think, you know, reducing the amount of bunkers would be really, really cool. Tyler Young! Let's see more Bikini Girl. Oh, you know what? I realize that I'm totally not in... I'm, I'm like all over the place right now. Let's see more Bikini Girl posters. I don't have more. I just have one. I just have one. I can't show more. Maybe we'll look at it later. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you, though. I'll give you a little heart. And Ben, Ben Lawton signed up for an advanced membership. Go watch my, uh, go watch the uh, video I put up today. There's two videos I put up today. Uh, yeah, I think that we have so many of these bunkers out of like, you know, just right out of back center. Everybody kind of plays in that pocket in that back center area. And if you got rid of a lot of those bunkers and put bunkers in the corners like we used to have all the time, you know, you get people running out wide. And it might be risky to run out wide, but I think trying to force those people to run wide off the break, you know, it's kind of a a big win situation. A big win situation. It's like a there's a big risk and reward or whatever, right? So if you make it, great. If you don't, you know, that sucks. But it speeds the matchup for us. It allows just I don't know, it just speeds the matchup so much more. If you're playing like a four on five, uh, it might actually make these games quicker. And if that's something we want to do, uh, speeding the game up, then uh, I think that is uh, something we should look into. Making the uh, less bunkers. 
Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. My computer's like freaking out. Like it's like going hog right now. So we might be getting some laggy or skipping things. I think I'm actually having real computer problems though. Oh, you know what I just realized? Yeah, I think I'm actually having like actual computer problems. The other day when I was trying to like edit, uh, edit, yeah, edit some video, I just was having all kinds of like weird problems. I'm trying to like uncrop something. Yeah, that's good enough for now. Yep. All kinds of weird problems. I'm with Mark. If you guys are still here uh, and the stream has totally not crashed for you. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Go up there and leave a uh, like like on the stream. You know, let me know. Let me uh, know you don't like it or like it by, you know, liking the stream. I'm totally distracted right now trying to figure out why this computer is going crazy. We're going to turn off noise reduction. And now you might be able to hear the air conditioner a little bit more. I don't know. Eric, you're amazing. You're amazing, Eric. Eric just reminded me down there in the chat uh, that over in the Paintball Ruined My Life Facebook group, uh, which you can find a picture of in the description, not a picture, you can find a link in the description, uh, there is currently a raffle uh, taking place for the Lux Idol. Uh, there's probably, I don't know, 30 or 40, 50 tickets left, something like that. Tickets are $10 a piece, and there are 200 tickets in total. Uh, you can go over there, you know, buy yourself a raffle ticket. Maybe win yourself a $1,800 paintball gun for 10 bucks. I actually really like the idol. Uh, I don't really have that much bad to say about it. <gasps> <laughs> Uh, other than it, like, cut my hand all up, trying to, like, take the back strap off. Uh, I kind of like it. The trigger feels really good. You can hear it a little bit right there. Uh, go over to the Paintball Ruined My Life Facebook group. Uh, five bucks? No, ten bucks for tickets. Uh, this is how I do these videos, you know? Like, without being able to uh, raffle these things off, without the freaking super chats from people, without... Uh, some of you guys that have signed up for memberships here on YouTube, without that, uh, without support from you guys, hey, the whole thing's not even freaking possible. I mean, it's getting to the point where it's maybe not even possible. <laughs> Go over there. Ben, I was just going to blame Caffeine TV for the lag. Started once we mentioned them. You know, I don't, I honestly don't know, but yesterday I had to like restart my computer a bunch of times and... I was having a problem with Final Cut. What is going on here? Dude, Firefox is doing something crazy. I think it literally might be their website. Are you kidding me? Well, there we go, guys. Your lag is now gone. <laughs> no joke. Wow. Here's a... Uh, screenshot of... Uh, oh, jeez. Son of a bitch. Here is a screenshot. Maybe not, actually. Sorry, guys. This is a chaotic live stream. Look at the uh, usage right there. You can see right there, you can see that that big, huge flat spot at about 434 is uh, when we went to that caffeine website, and you can see right there at about 4.44, a little bit after that, like 4.46 is when we shut it down. Did their site take that data? You know what actually was happening? Is it was like, 
I don't know. I was like downloading something. Let's open it again and see if it does it again. I can probably close that. I don't really need that for you guys. Ben with that $2 super chat. You are the smartest man alive. I'm actually... Weirdly, though, as soon as I looked, because like, I have my uh, like bandwidth and stuff up there, and I was like, why am I downloading it almost a mega second? I was like, I shouldn't be downloading anything. Let's go back over to the browser. I didn't actually do anything, did I? I stayed on theirs. And then we opened up this. Uh, maybe it was just this in the background that was killing it. I don't know. Either way. Caffeine TV! I don't even know what the deal is with that, so that's not very exciting. I'm gonna, you know, guys, all the member people, I'm gonna try to, like, read member comments for sure in YouTube as well. Uh, I would like to see Paintball Doc Series, uh, Docu Series, in the same same style as Drive to Survive on Netflix. It could follow the team and players' changes with the lead up to the events and World Cup. You know, me too. I mean, they, we kind of used to do that. You know, you think about like all the old Dirter videos, and uh, there was all like the Reckoning series, and there were a lot of Dirter videos for. You know, a good decade, maybe like 2004 to 2015 or 2016. Uh, so we definitely had that for a while. I mean, at least something similar. You know, obviously it's not like Drive to Survive quality. Um, you know, I actually thought about Drive to Survive the other day when I was watching. I watched season six, like, oh, I don't know, two weeks ago. And it's unimaginable how many cameras they have. So when the guy or the woman or the person or elephant or whatever is editing you know the video they have like 500 different camera angles cuz they have like all the car camera angles they have all their camera angles they have like all the TV camera stuff uh it's kind of mind blowing actually how many camera angles they have uh but I'd love to see it too I mean obviously you know if they could make anything uh similar to that that would be exciting uh just like drive to survive it'd be awesome I know that Tom Cole actually tried to get uh, somebody on board this year with doing that, get a company to do it, but um, I don't know, what'd they say? It was going to be like $600,000 an episode or something like that, and which sounds cheap to me, actually. <laughs> like, the Netflix episodes, Drive to Survive at this point is probably like $10 million an episode, or like $8 million an episode, or $15 million an episode, or something like that, so it's uh, even that $600,000 price is way, way, way out of uh, the realm of the NXL. And it's a, certainly a risk. I mean, imagine if they were like, all right, we're going to spend $3 million or whatever, or $2 million on this, uh, you know, docu-series or whatever. Who knows? You know, does it do anything? You know, can they get a return on that? Are they going to get more people to play paintball and all that stuff? I mean, it certainly helped out Netflix. Uh, pro cycling, like actual like cycling, like Tour de France bike riders, uh, they actually tried to do the same kind of style uh, series that they did with Drive to Survive, but it just didn't do well. And it kind of like fizzled out, so. I don't know. Ideally, they could make it and then sell it, though. You know, they could make, uh, make the whole thing and then be able to sell it to a network. That also is a thing that kind of happens. Zobit! Are you guys still here? Are we still like streaming and stuff? It still all works. We're still here. So, but I wonder if it was auto playing video in the background. Yeah, I think so. I think it was like it just played a video that was in a live stream. It was just live streaming something. That would explain that interesting view counts you were talking about. Yeah, I was like, uh, what? Well, only thing that made me even think about it was because. Uh, Tom Cole, uh, on that podcast, said, uh, oh, not, I don't know if he said it, actually. No, yeah, he said they were getting a lot of views. I don't know if he said the exact number, but uh, the title of the podcast was like a hundred, like a million views or something like that. And I was like, what? I was like, on some YouTube short? <laughs> I was like, I don't know if that means anything. Yeah. 
what the hell was I talking about? A million views, yeah. It just seems like they pumped it up. They pumped up the, the views on those first, like, handful of videos or something like that, so. Ben Lawton. If Hormesis does another 1v1 tour, just follow that and make it accessible format for new viewers. For sure. I think that would be interesting. I mean, the problem with the 1v1s, though, I mean, not it's not necessarily 1v1s, but what I think what would be cooler about, like, doing it with the NXL or whatever... Um, just like Dave said, said follow them around the whole year, or you know, and then have a big build up to World Cup or whatever. Uh, with you know the one v ones, it's really hard to do that because you can't. There's just different people at every single tournament. You know, if we were if we had a traveling thing and you could like keep track of, you know, the player that you like through eight episodes or something like that. Uh, I think that'd be cool. It's a little bit easier to tell like. Uh, stories and stuff like that, but I love, I absolutely love one-on-ones. I mean, I think that one-on-ones are, like, what we should be doing. I mean, I think we should just do one-on-ones. But everybody's, like, so, like, oh, we can't change the format. And like, oh, God. But, like, no one said change the format. We're just going to do one-on-ones. It's like, we can have different formats. You know, remember when we had seven-man and ten-man and five-man? And we have three-man and two-man? And, like, why can't we have one-on-ones? You know, it's like... <laughs> We have all these other formats, and that's one of the things that's cool about paintball. You know, you can play woods ball. We can play only mechanical hyperball if you want. You can play only air ball. You can play pump. You could, you know, do all kinds of different things. Uh, so I think that uh, doing more of the one-on-ones is great. I wish they could get, like, a stadium and have, like, not necessarily stadium seating, but uh, kind of build a stadium at one of the paintball fields, just rent a bunch of bleachers and... You know, put the bleachers in the stand, or put people in the stands, and uh, just get a lot of people there to like build up excitement. Cause it's a certainly exciting to watch. You know, like I, there's no way that if we were all you know at a paintball field uh, watching like you know Ryan Greenspan and Marcelo play each other, and then uh, you get some of the new guys like Chris Treegarth and from the Ironmen, <laughs> maybe he plays. <laughs> There's some people in here who do not like Chris Treegarthen. We'll say that much. Treegarth, Treegarthen, Treegarth, something like that. I think having, uh, Ben says, I think having each city as the story would be interesting versus following people, at least for now. Yeah, that's for sure. I mean, I'd love to see it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I think it's a great idea. I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. Um, and I don't know why they don't. You know, I kind of think they are trying to do that. I mean, obviously they had... Uh, they had Brian Benini uh, and Miko Hootenin. Miko uh, and Brian, longtime paintball people. They've made all kinds of videos in paintball and outside of paintball. They were definitely at the Hormesis uh, 1v1 stuff, but I think it was more to make uh, the Iron Kids like Dynasty documentary that's going to be coming out, which sounds and looks very, very cool. That guy, that pump pro guy, yeah. <laughs> So, Chris, I'll just tell people what happened. So, I'm pretty sure. I mean, I wasn't there. This is what I've heard. Uh, but apparently, uh, Chris Treegarth from the Ironman was playing uh, Pump uh, at Las Vegas. Uh, and Pump was, I think, five man. I think it was five man. Uh, but it, the NXL actually hadn't had a Pump tournament for like four years or something like that. And. Uh, you know, most people don't have beaver tails on autocockers anymore. You know, it's just not really a thing. Uh, and especially on pump guns. You know, there's plenty of pump guns uh, that are manufactured that you can't even put a beaver tail on. Uh, but you have to have a beaver tail, technically. You know, it's part of the rules. Uh, but uh, Chris Treegarthen apparently ratted everybody out and was like, oh, you can't use that gun, you can't use that one, and was like trying to get him to enforce like this uh, beaver tail rule. Which seems petty, but, you know, he's really good. I mean, he's, like, super legit, but he was mad at people that have beaver tails. I don't know. What, uh, what else can we talk about? 
Not all that much. I, we were gonna, I was going to talk about the WCPPL live stream, but I don't know. Freaking Beaver Gate. Some brains. Yeah, I know. I even thought about trying to like. I don't really have. I don't have. I don't have an autocogger here to kind of like show people, but. Yeah, but no one's doing that. I mean, no one's doing that in a five-man airball pump tournament, you know? <laughs> this is not evident. It's just kind of an uh, odd thing. Jack Dorse, 170 or an amp for the same price. I only play Woods Ball. Uh, Danny Lincoln says amp for sure. And he says, I have the amp and the 180R, and I like the amp better. Uh, you know, I'd rather have the 170R. I uh, don't necessarily trust the reliability of the shockers that much. I mean, the amp's not bad, uh, but it's no question I I like prefer the Planet Eclipse guns, mainly just because they're ergonomics and reliability. I meant to say reliability, mainly because of the reliability. And the amp just makes me feel like I'm a like Andre the Giant or something like that. It's actually kind of hard to do correctly. I know I could do it. I could for sure do it. There's no question. I can just hold the gun and like ding 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 ding. ding. I can just, I can just shoot like uh, it's not even a big problem. Randy, is that you? Leave it to the beaver tail. I used to be a beaver when I was a kid. I swam on the Carmichael beavers. <laughs> That's right, I can, I can, the air conditioner is still going. The air conditioner has been off like an hour and a half. Air conditioner's off. Forgot I had the fog machine too. It's kind of fun. I actually did it. I used it in a video, but you can't really, you couldn't really tell. So it just looked kind of like out of focus. <laughs> didn't look very cool. The 95608. Oh, yep. Rubber burn is how fair rokes. Rocket City Trash Pandas. I don't know. I don't know what else to talk about. I have, I have run my course of information. So uh, now it's question and answer time. Ask me some more questions. So I have something to talk about. Uh, or maybe we'll, uh, I don't know, take a nap. I'd really like to take a nap. <laughs> it's not fogging. Austin, what'd you say? Yeah, I think the Hormesis 1v1 is some of the best paintball I've watched in a long time. Some don't agree, but that's my take. Uh, I agree. I totally agree. You know, like watching the Hormesis stuff, I actually like was more involved, right? I was more engaged with it. I mean, any of these one-on-ones, they're so quick and like the camera knows what to look at, right? There's only two people. So there's only so many like things you can look at, right? And you know, this five on five thing, you know, there's 10 dudes. So which, what do you look at? What camera angle do you do? What do you do? Uh, so I think that the one-on-one -on -one stuff is just more engaging. It's just easier to watch. Uh, I think it's more fluid. Yeah. I think it's just easier to watch it. So I like it. I mean, I hope we do more of them. Uh, do you like the era? Um, I mean, yes and no. I mean, I don't think they're bad guns, right? And they're certainly better than they were. Like, you know, I never wanted to own a Shocker RSX. I mean, I've, ne I've never wanted to own any smart parts gun, truthfully. Or Shocker or Lux or whatever. Um, yeah, I certainly don't think they're bad, right? I mean, at one point, I just wouldn't at all want one of the old shockers. 
Uh, but they've certainly gotten better and better and better over time. And they're getting to the point where they're closer and closer, I think, in reliability and, like, I don't know, niceness as the Planet Eclipse guns. Um, but there's still some things I don't like. You know, like, I really don't like the solenoid removal. Uh, I kind of wish the grips were different. I don't like the ergonomics. Uh, the trigger feels really good, though. I really like the trigger on the Era. It feels probably the best they've, like, done. Yeah. Did I miss the Alpha tanks? Yeah, it was, like, way long ago. It was, like, right in the beginning. Cole, when you talk about reliability in the Shockers, what do you think is bad side? What do you think is the bad side of reliability? Like, like what causes them to be unreliable? I don't even know. I mean, I couldn't tell you. I think that there's nothing, like... I mean, at least at this point, there's nothing that's, like, egregious, right? It's not like... You know, back in the day, there were guns that was like, it was constantly this one thing that would go bad and this one little issue. But I think that we're at the point now where, like, most of the guns are pretty good and they're built well and they're designed well. It, But it just ends up being kind of random, right? I mean, you could have, like, say, 100 guns and for some reason, 100 of them didn't work. And, you know, it, it'd probably be kind of random. You know, you wouldn't see the same problem cropping up unless people weren't taking care of them or, you know, whatever. But it'd probably be just little different things for every single one of them. Uh, Pew Pew Mike's like the little wire pins. Uh, yeah, I mean, they had a problem with those, like, connecting to the board. Uh, but that was, you know, one of the things that actually changed on the Lux Idol is just kind of how wide those pins are and stuff. So they shouldn't have, like, like a problem with them losing connection or anything like that. Benny, is it a safety thing? Like, a safety thing for, like, the, about the guns? Or was it, like, a... Another comment. Uh, no, there's definitely nothing dangerous. I mean, unless you, you know, hit yourself in the head or something. I don't know. Uh, there's nothing dangerous about anything, for sure. I mean, don't shoot yourself. You know, there's you could do that. But nothing's, like, blowing up or nothing crazy is happening, so. Yeah. Eric. <laughs> Eric. For some reason, I loved my Epiphany Smart Parts. That's funny. <laughs> it was a tank. Yeah, it was a tank. Uh, and that's what I was kind of thinking about these two. Right? Speaking about these tanks, uh, these tanks, you know, one of the things that, like, uh, some of the old, old, old guns, like, if you shoot, like, a, like, the old Shocker, right? Like, an original Shocker 4x4 or whatever from, like, 1998, uh, those guns shoot really well, but it's mainly because they weigh eight pounds. I mean, literally, they're like seven pounds compared to the new Shocker. That's like a pound and a half, right? So having those things be super heavy, they kind of absorb the kick and stuff like that. Uh, whereas these, you know, these new tanks are so light, uh, and our guns and equipment are getting so much lighter. Uh, we might start noticing, like you might notice if you put this on your gun. You know, like if I use this and compared to my 80, uh, I'm probably going to notice a little bit of a difference. I might see that the gun uh, kicks a little bit more or shoots a little bit different uh, with one of these really light tanks. And like that Epiphany, it was just able to like absorb all of the, uh, I don't know, blasting away or something like that. These tanks are super, super light though. The Alpha. The Alpha. Shoebox Shockers and the old Matrixes shot great. So I, f I have a friend. Let's see if we can find this. My friend Michael Dufort. Let's see if we can find... And I don't know. Whoops. If 
put that right there. Uh, oh, my friend Michael, he has one of these things. There were a very, very, very select few of these. This is an Ironman Matrix Intimidator. Matrix Intimidator? This is an Ironman, Ironman Matrix. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even really remember. Was this like 2003 or 2002 or something like that, probably? Uh, these are very rare. I think I'm going to make it a video on this. I'm going to try to get... Uh, I'm like seeing something. The lens. Uh, they're very rare, so I might actually try to make a video on this gun. Uh, I don't know really how or what we'll talk about in it, but uh, it's possible. If I can get the mouse to work. Jeez, I can't like see the mouse. I'm gonna close those. Iron Man Matrixes, those are really cool though. Fitz Games, those 77s are so light. Yeah, it is kind of crazy. It's like, I don't know, 15, 18, 20% lighter. Maybe not 20%, maybe like 18 to, yeah, like 18, 15, 18, something like that. What's the oldest marker I have? Tyler asks. I don't know. I don't really have a lot of stuff, honestly. Probably this, this. Yeah. I'm gonna do that so YouTube doesn't think it's a goddamn firearm. Um, this Angel LCD. You can't see the trigger frame though, but I will tell you it's a single trigger. <laughs> it totally doesn't work. I've had it for like 15 years. It's never worked. So, uh, you know, there's that. Uh, I got an A5. You know, I don't really have anything cool because it's really difficult. Like, I don't really need it. Like, I don't really need to own like high-end cool paintball guns, you know, because uh, like... I could just use this. See, I don't want to show this. This is what got me kicked off YouTube last, like, two weeks ago. Showing the freaking Lux on the screen. There's just, I'm always just reviewing and testing stuff, so it's kind of doesn't make sense when we don't anything. Uh, and if I did, it'd be mechanical anyway, because most of the time I play, it's mechanical, so I don't want to, like, own electric high-end guns. So... Chris Williams, NXL needs to offer a field affiliate program and offer a free airball set for displaying NXL slash Major League Paintball advertising and media. So many people who play paintball are completely unaware the NXL exists. Uh, what were you saying though? NXL needs to offer field Well. They're definitely not going to give them a free free tournament feel. I mean, because that's like eight grand. <laughs> um, I agree. You know, one of the things that I Marcelo uh, Marcelo's talked about this a lot. Nate Marcelo, ooh, a Rasta G7. That's pretty cool. Um, that was I saying. Marcelo, yeah, Marcelo's always said that. Marcelo was like, I think that if the registration or like, you know, where you're paying for entry and stuff, they should have like a TV set up and have like, you know. Oh no, maybe this was Greenspan. This was Greenspan. Ryan Greenspan said that uh, he's tried to do that or he did this for one field somewhere. How he made like a little promo thing and was like, this is tournament paintball. And it was like a video that was playing right by the like uh, paying area or whatever. Uh, so it kind of introduced people to like, you know, pro paintball or whatever. I don't know. It's just so hard. I mean, it's just so difficult because a lot of these paintball fields don't really make a lot of money on tournament stuff either. It's like, I mean, you might make like, you know, they obviously make money. You can't be, you know, losing money. 
Um, so they're making money, but they make so much more money off like rental players and birthday parties and stuff like that, that a lot of the fields just rather do that. You know, they rather just do a bunch of rental groups and birthday parties and even have tournament fields. It's mainly why a lot of them uh, don't have them. Leftover from the event. Oh, you mean like bunkers? But then they just sell those too, so... <laughs> They do. They sell those for like, I don't know, they're like 30-ish 30, 30 percent off or something like that. I mean, Capital Edge here, they just spent $20,000 on two fields. Like, they just bought two new airball fields, twenty grand. Ben! <laughs> are, are there anno slash marker colors that are off limits per the NXL rules? I kind of want to do a pink sprinkle, sprinkle donut. Well, that would be kind of cool, actually. I like it. But pink is the new go-to fill for them. You know, I don't have an answer for you. Um... I don't have an answer. I know that they, I, I recently looked at the rule books, uh, rule, I was going to try to pull up a PDF and look, but that's not going to, that's still, that'll take a while. Uh, I honestly don't know. I mean, I, oh, I do know. I'm pretty sure pink is, pink is an okay color right now. I'm pretty sure that yellow is still the band color because like last tournament, uh, the, uh, like Uprising, Uprising had a logo, like an old logo on their jerseys, but it actually had like a bunch of yellow on it. So they had to, uh, like cover it up or whatever. Adrenaline! You're not supposed to do yellow. Yeah, there we go. But we've done a bunch and no one ever said they got in trouble. I also asked if when we redid the Lifesaver, oh, the Lifesaver has yellow and was told they aren't looking for it. Maybe not then. I don't know. But Uprising for sure had to cover up their jersey. Maybe just because it was like right on their shoulder or something like that. It was really obvious. You know, most people uh, don't have like... I don't know. You're not like trying to hide gun hits. We got Rainy signed up for a rental membership. Maybe I should change the name of rental. I don't know. Either way, memberships, guys. It's like god tier stuff for me. You know, we're gonna get this thing to four hundred thousand memberships. <laughs> I'll buy a house if we can get four hundred thousand memberships. I'll buy a house. <sighs> it's, houses are goddamn expensive. I was recently looking at Clear Lake. I think I want to try to go to Clear Lake in a couple weeks and just kind of check out the Clear Lake area. It looks really cool. And it's cheap, too. Uh, film matters more than the shell. Yeah. There you go. Anthony says, if you ask a ref, then all of a sudden it's not okay. So just don't say anything. <laughs> that's, the, that's, the, that's the route that I would take. But then you could get a penalty too, though. That would or in trouble. Actually, I don't know if you get like a penalty. What happens? They just probably tell you you can't use it. Cold Zen says at WCPPL you were not allowed to wear pink, which makes sense because they were using all that pink fill. Oop! Just ba damn, bam. just bass. Just damn it! Just basing around. You mean methville? <laughs> Dude, it's beautiful. Like, if you, I also was wondering, there's a city called Nice, California, but it was actually named after Nice, California. Or Nice, France, I'm sorry, Jesus Christ. So is it pronounced Nice? Uh, was about to say Clear Lake is not the spot. Maybe not like Clear Lake the city. I don't know, we'll find out. Oh, look at that. Peace. Just base bass it around, you would know about fishing. I know I, I looked all over the place. There's like fishing everywhere. Well, not really fishing everywhere. Just uh, there's everyone has like 
fishing boats and there's like marinas and stuff all over the lake. It's actually the largest freshwater lake in, it's actually the biggest natural lake in California and it's the oldest lake in North America. I found that out today. That's like Paradise, California, where it's cr cratered meth and bent hole. <laughs> well, we'll see, you know. I got about $7 million to spend in a house, so I could, you know, I can buy something pretty nice and get away from the meth addicts, you know. Uh, I don't think, I don't think anywhere you go now, though, I think it's going to be meth and <laughs> fentanyl riddled. Unfortunately, it's crazy. Nate, how do I sign up for a membership? That's a good question. Well, if you're on an iPhone or an iPad, because of like Apple takes 30%, they don't like actually allow, I don't know, I can't tell you. I don't really know what's going on. So if you go to some channels on the iOS app, like if you go to some YouTube channels on the iOS app, the the YouTube iOS app, some of them actually have a join button. Mine doesn't. I don't really know why. Some people say it's because uh, it has something to do with uh, the 30% cut they take. Uh, but if you do it from a browser, uh, like if you do it on a, you know, your laptop or browser or whatever, or if you go to YouTube in the browser and then request a desktop view, <laughs> it'll work. I don't know. We'll get there. Uh, Nate, how far is Clear Lake from SAC? Uh, like about two hours-ish. Somewhere around there. Cole, played a 3v3 tournament last week. After every point, the rest checked you and then chronoed. I never seen that before. We also got chronoed as we walked on the field. Uh, walking on the field's pretty typical. You know, I think that, you know, that's pretty much every tournament. Kind of when you walk through the net, you know, you're, you take like a handful of shots and check velocity. Uh, that's pretty normal. Um, checking after is not so much nowadays. They used to do it all the time, uh, but I wouldn't say that I've seen it that much. Uh, coming off the field, at least, because who, like, I don't know. I mean, back in the day, people used to try to cheat all the time, and you could, you know, people were probably trying to turn their velocity up when they got on the field and cheat and stuff. Uh, I don't really think, that's not really an issue today. So uh, most people aren't, most refs probably aren't checking when you're coming off the field. Uh, what was I going to say? They're probably not crawling off the field. Just like they're not really looking for guns anymore. Either. They're not looking for, like, cheating guns and stuff. Cause it's just really not a thing anymore. Uh, like some brands said, chronoing off is if they want to mess with you. Uh, yeah, or they think that, like, you know, for some reason you're cheating or your gun sounds weird or, you know, something's wrong maybe. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Person that scored the point had to get chronoed every time. Uh, well, at least they're doing it to everyone. I mean, as long as it's, you know, they're doing it to everyone, then whatever. I mean, I always try to shoot, like, 285. Even if I'm at tournaments, like, I'm going to shoot 285, 290, maybe. You know, I don't really want to risk uh, that, like, whew, whatever. Rainy, with that $5 super chat, and I saw you signed up for a... You signed up for a membership? <clears throat> I'm burping like crazy today. Moving to Washington State soon. All right. And looking to get back into paintball... Would I, would it be good to go to get a used CS2 instead of buying a CS3? Yeah, for sure, dude. I mean, for sure. I mean, you can pretty much buy, like, I don't know, any, every high-end gun the last 10 years. Like, if you buy something 2014 or 2015, it's not really going to be any better or worse than the current guns. I mean, sure, the CS3 might have, like, a couple things that nicer features. You know, newer guns are going to evolve. Uh, but they're not really that much better. Um, so for sure, I mean, you're perfectly fine with a used CS2. You could go cheaper. I mean, you could buy a 170R. Uh, 170Rs you can probably find for like 600, 500 bucks or something in there. 
Uh, there are plenty of very, very good uh, options. You know, I really, 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 really like the Etha 3. Uh, Etha 3 is brand new or 550. So it's like, yeah, there are plenty of good things to purchase that are old. You can get away with anything, really. Yep. CS2, CS3. Tyler's like DSR. There's yeah, there's just a ton of good there's just a ton of good options. Uh, or you know, if you maybe had a planet eclipse gun before, maybe you're a little more familiar with them, just stick with them. So Running to the gym. Later nerds. <laughs> I'm certainly a nerd. Yeah. As a newer ref at my local fields tournaments, I'd love to hear any funny or good or bad ref experiences. Shit, I don't... For me, I've probably refed once. I goddamn hate refing. I would avoid it with a passion. Uh, so, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not the guy. Um, I mean, I could tell you this was kind of funny. This is probably like 2000, this was either like 2004, 2005, 2006, somewhere in there. And uh, we were at a tournament and we made like, we were going to all the PSP tournaments and this was in Florida and I don't know where, but whatever team was on the field uh, refing us, we had a bunch of uh, EP? And Nate signed up for advanced memberships. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. And I've paused Patreon too, so I mean, no one's ever gonna get a, a charge from Patreon from me ever again. Um, yeah, so we would uh, we were in Florida at a tournament, and the the team that was refing on the field that we were playing on, uh, the guys that were Refing. We're actually a team, uh, and we'd been playing against them in the previous like couple tournaments, right? And we'd you know seen them at the field. We actually went out to dinner with them the tournament before, uh, so we became like really good friends. Yes, dude, it was crazy. They were like pulling penalties for us. We would like walk up like one turn. One time I was like, that guy's got a hit on his pack, and then the ref just like, all right, and <laughs> just like pulled the dude. I was like, all right. We were just like telling the refs what to do. Uh, it was pretty funny. Uh, maybe for us, maybe not so funny for uh, people on the other team. Uh, but the refs were certainly helping us out that tournament. I don't know what that team was. I can't remember. I don't know. Anthony says, A funny ref was using baseball calls to tell people they were out. It was hilarious. You know what's funny is we do that though. We do the safe thing. Like if you're not hit, like if it's a bounce or you're going for a check or whatever, we call the safe thing. They also do like the twirly bird, like you're good, safe thing. Like, ah. But I like to call people like, ah, like do a big punch out. <laughs> I mean, you can do that, why not? I mean, people, it's like, ah, as long as you're like pointing at someone. You kind of are, though. I like it. Reffing at Mayor Island <laughs> was fun because you got to watch the old 10-man pro teams practice. You, that's kind of like, uh, you know, reffing here. You know, we get to watch a lot of pro teams. Uh, you know, funny thing is, a lot of those pro guys are still playing paintball, which is crazy. Think about the Ironmen and all those guys that used to play out there. There's a handful of those guys that are still playing. How smoky can we make it? Alright. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, switchy, a switchy TM40 for a mech frame DSR Plus because it's soft on paint. Switching from your TM40 to your DSR. Uh, yeah, I love the DSR Plus. It's kind of crazy to me, actually. Like, our friend Angelo just bought one, and, like, it's wild, dude. Like, 
I know they shoot well, but it's like I'll go like three months without touching one. And then someone has one and I'm like, my God, those things are quiet. And it's like you shoot those things and it feels like it's shooting like 150. It's like, it's just so weird. They're so crazy. They're just like the smoothest, like quietest, I think smoothest and quietest gun ever made. It's, I mean, they're crazy how well those guns shoot. It's kind of crazy. I'm really, really excited to see like uh, Dai's new high-end gun whenever the heck that happens. Uh, hopefully at World Cup. I mean, I'd love to see one uh, because I'm a much fan of the DSRs and the DSR Pluses. DSR Plus is the go-to for sure, Fitz Gaming says. Yeah, I really like them. I mean, I wish that like... I just wish it was a little bigger. Like, yeah, I just wish it was bigger. I mean, I kind of wish it was just bigger all around, but, uh, you know, most people it probably fits fine for, so. I'm finally gonna go to SC Village this weekend. Really, are you gonna go alone? That's cool though. But that place is cracking. I mean, they've like done such a like, improvement to those properties and all kinds of stuff. They like the airball fields really nice now and they've got like I don't know. They're just like sprucing it up a lot. Marine 71 says, "I just got a major yes. I'm going to go play in about a week and I went with it cuz I'm 56 and small hands. So it's perfect for me and can't wait to go play." You betcha. I love the goddamn Mini. Um, yeah, I was thinking about the Mini earlier, and, like, someone was complaining about, like, uh, pricing and stuff. And they were like, oh, you know, paintball stuff so expensive. You know, as much as I blasted that thing, just as much as I blasted the smoke thing, it didn't really, like, do much. I got it all kind of like get out over here. Maybe that's because it was like blowing over there. Um, yeah, I love the Meiji S. Someone was talking about how like paintball guns are so expensive. You know, how like they're trying to like rip us off by selling us these $1,800 guns. And it's like, dude, you don't have to buy it. That's like complaining about like car companies trying to sell four hundred thousand dollar cars it's like you don't have to buy a four hundred thousand dollar car <laughs> you know there's plenty of other options like the mini gs and it's kind of crazy that those things are three hundred dollars right now and i mean at three hundred dollars it's just mind-blowing like it's such a good value at three hundred dollars and i imagine they're three hundred dollars mainly because the etha 3 came out and it's been selling so well they kind of had to lower the price on those things a little bit so they can you know, just compete with the Etha a little bit more. Uh, but I love the Mini. I uh, really have always liked the Axes. I like the way those guns shoot, and they're just good little guns. So, love the Mini. Have fun. I think it's supposed to rain this weekend. Who knows? Nate, you're going alone. Yeah, I am. Unless you want to drive. Damn, I'd whoop. Fuck. <laughs> oh. I wish. I prefer my LV2 to my DSR Plus. Both are great guns, though. Yeah, I really like the LV2 also. I mean, yeah, I really liked the LV2 when I was using it for that, like, couple weeks when I had it for review. They're very good. A little people, or some people, they're just a little bit too big for, which, uh, I understand that. They're almost a little bit too big for me, even. I almost think they're a little bit too big. I think that that front foregrip, if it was like 10% smaller or something like that, I'd probably be like, perfect. Perfect. But I really like the ergonomics of the Etha, so, you know. That's what's going on. Man, I am, I'm really tired today. Got up at 4 a.m. I couldn't sleep last night. 
got up at like 3.30 or something like that and was just like... <laughs> I was like, shit. <laughs> so we got up at 4. So early, Starbucks wasn't open for an hour and a half and it was crazy. 4 a.m. Where are my notes at? I'm going to close my notes. Let's give me some likes. If you're in here, give me a like. Like the live stream. Give the live stream a little like. Uh, it really does help this thing. It helps videos. So if you're ever like, you know, watching a video, help, you know, like it, leave a comment. Uh, it helps like the algorithm or whatever, supposedly. Uh, Tyler Young, knee pad recommendations. Um... I don't know. There's a lot of good knee pads. I mean, I think it just kind of depends on what you want. You know, I think that there's two different styles you can probably try to choose from. Uh, there's going to be like minimalish pads, uh, like say like the infamous pads or the Hydra pads, the carbon pads. You know, the carbon pads are kind of in the middle. Uh, and then there's certainly bigger stuff like the die knee pads or the HK knee pads. Uh, I would try to narrow down if you want like heavier knee pads or something lightweight and you said lightweight and you know honestly haven't worn knee pads in like a year and a half i've totally given up on knee pads uh i just don't really need them <laughs> i just decided i don't really have to need them um so on lightweight stuff i don't really have a ton of experience with them honestly uh i for sure what people are saying in here everyone's like infamous and hydra those are probably the two most popular ones. I've never tried on uh, the Hydra ones. I have tried on the Infamous pads. Uh, and I could wear the Infamous ones. I mean, knee pads are one of those things, though, that if you can, I would highly, highly recommend trying on. I mean, it's like the only piece of equipment that you need to fit perfect. You know, you can't have, like, your knee pads too tight so you can't bend your leg. And they can't be so loose they're falling off. So if you can, I would try it. I would attempt to try them on first. Like if you have a paintball store near you, uh, at least you could get an idea of how some of the stuff fits. Yeah. That's my answer. Uh, I definitely like the infamous stuff. I like the infamous stuff because it's made really well. Um, the Hydra stuff may well be too. I've, I've never even actually touched the Hydra knee pads. Oh, no, yeah, I have, I guess. I have, for sure. But I don't have as much experience with them as the you know, infamous stuff, so... Oh, about 100% sure. The Tipman Vantage. What the hell is the Tipman Vantage? Isn't that like their new, like... <laughs> Why Tipman Vantage? Isn't that like their weird little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, Griffin. That's what I'm. That's the word I was looking for. The Tipman Griffin. <laughs> Bobby, that's your new. Is that you're gonna use that? The Vantage. Dude, those guns shoot so bad. They're so bad. They're like clang clang. <laughs> like it's like ah, it's crazy how much they like vibrate and craziness. They remind me of the way my spider shutter shot in 1998 or whatever it was. Not 98, maybe like 2002. 2002. All right, I'm just going to go. I'm exhausted and I'm freaking hungry. I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm like uh, fading off into the distance. Um, yep. Uh, so this week... Uh, on the no next week on the YouTube channel, uh, we've talked about kind of a lot, uh, not a lot, but a little bit here and there. Uh, G1 Paintball, uh, they make like a different kind of cool head wraps and like headgear and stuff. Uh, they make a really lightweight kind of like uh, head wrap. It's got like some padding and stuff on the top, and I really really like them. Uh, and I'm doing there should be a video up on that. Uh, next week, it's already done. It's just got to be timed and scheduled. I still got to make a thumbnail, I guess. Uh, but it'll be up next week for sure. It's probably going to be called like the best summer paintball headgear or like, let's look at my working titles. 
I have the best headgear for protection and staying cool, which is probably not going to happen. The one thing you're missing in your gear bag, and it's cheap. The one cheap thing you're missing in your paintball gear bag, probably not. It's probably going to be my new favorite piece of headgear or the perfect paintball summer headgear. Something like that. Keep your eye out for it. Uh, yeah. Thank you all the super chatters. You guys are freaking awesome. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, you guys are freaking awesome. Schwartz, Chris, a Ben, Mark, Tyler, a Ben again, a Ben again, golly. Rainy. Uh, you guys are freaking awesome. And then everyone who signed up for a new YouTube memberships as well. Uh, you can go check out that. Check out how to join YouTube memberships. It should be fairly easy if you're on a computer. Uh, and then there's some like uh, new exclusive kind of videos over there you can go watch as well. Okay. Uh, guys, come back next Thursday. Uh, and then uh, let's say on Tuesday, uh, look for a headgear video. Uh, that'll be on the channel. Thursday.